Welcome back everyone. My name is Joel Feld and today I wanted to make your life a little bit easier with teaching you how to use stage manager, mission control, and some other shortcuts to help you multitask and manage all of the crazy windows that you probably have open on your Mac. Here we go. If you're like me, you probably have multiple windows open that are all stacked on top of one another and you have your email and a web browser and music or Spotify. You just probably have a whole bunch going on and more times than not, it can get a little overwhelming and frustrating to have all of these tools and applications open. So there's some cool features on the Mac that are built in that allow you to simplify and keep things organized automatically. There's a feature called Stage Manager that allows you to easily manipulate the windows and the applications, hide things and show things when you need them so you can focus primarily on your task at hand. So first I wanna create a scenario of a typical work experience. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Safari, Apple Photos. We'll just do apple.com here. Open up Pages, Music, and I'll open up the Calendar which calendar is crazy. All of these windows are stacked on top of each other. So what you end up doing is kind of moving them around and they get shuffled and in the top left, you can minimize it and that goes down to your dock, which is fine. But overall, it can be a little frustrating because there's a lot of things that get stacked on top of one another and you kind of lose that momentum or that, that productivity. And Stage Manager allows you to focus on the one thing that you're trying to do. In order to use it though, we need to turn it on. So let's go ahead and go to the Apple in the top left, choose System Preferences. If you're like me, this new operating system makes it a little challenging to find all of the stuff that you're looking for. So I use the search in the top left. So I'm gonna start to type in Stage and here we have under desktop and dock, stage manager. Well, that means that if we scroll down to desktop and dock, here we have stage manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle this on. Now, as soon as I did that, notice all of those windows just shot to the side. They got out of the way because I'm focused on this one particular app, system settings. If I come over here to the left-hand side, I can hover over any of these icons. If I click on one, it automatically switches spots. So now I'm focused on Apple Photos and everything is over there to the left-hand side. I can still see all of the apps. So if I click on Calendar, if I click on Safari, they just kind of swap the space so that nothing is layered on top of one another. Now let's go back to system settings because there is an option to customize a little bit, not much, but there are some custom options. This first option allows you to show the recent applications. If you toggle this, all you have to do is move your cursor to the left-hand side and they kind of pop out. So you get a little bit more screen real estate. Let's toggle that back on. The other option is to hide or show things on your desktop. So notice right now, it's not showing anything on the desktop. So if we turn this on, we see everything on the desktop. I actually like to turn that off because if I click on the desktop, I can see the desktop and everything goes away and I see everything that's on there. Let's go back to system settings. The last option that you can customize is to show the windows from an application. What this means is you have two choices, either all at once or one at a time. All at once means, let's do this with Safari. So if I open up Safari and create a new window, so we'll do new window, and we'll just do Amazon. We'll do another window. We'll do YouTube. Okay, so we have three different web pages right here. If I go back, notice how everything hid there to the left. If I just scoot my cursor all the way to the left-hand side, it pops right out. I'll click on the system settings, go back to customize. So notice show window from an application, it's doing it all at once. So it showed us the three Safari windows all laid on top of one another. But if we change this option to one at a time, now when we click on Safari, the two over there stay and I can click and click and click to toggle through them and now they're not overlapping on one another. So I can focus just on one page. I can still have multiple tabs within one particular window, but if I have multiple windows open, they're over here on the left-hand side. Now, here's a nice little shortcut. If I hold down shift on the keyboard and click on Safari, it actually brings all of those windows towards me. So now they're all here again. If I click back on the desktop, they all go back, click once on it, 
they all come forward again. Now, if I hold down shift on the keyboard again and click on the top in this gray area, it just kind of tucks those other windows back where it belongs. And now they've swapped spaces again. So here is Apple, here's YouTube, there's Amazon. So if I hold down shift on the keyboard, click on it again, it brings up that other window, click it on a third time. Now I have all three Safari windows layered on one another. So nice little shortcut if you wanna keep that option on for once at a time. I prefer all at once, just because if I have multiple documents, multiple Word documents or multiple windows of Safari, I like to be able to see them all the time because usually I'm toggling between the two or comparing something. So I'm gonna leave that at all at once. Now the other options for Stage Manager, you can make it appear in the top right to turn it on or off. So notice in the top right here in the menu bar, I have the ability to either toggle on or off Stage Manager. This also gives you a quick option to get to Stage Manager settings directly from the menu bar as well, but you may not have Stage Manager up here unless you add it to the menu bar. So if we go back to System Settings, we're gonna go to Control Center on the left, and over here, we can choose under Stage Manager to show in menu bar. By default, it's probably set to don't show in menu bar. So notice how it disappeared in the top right. So we're gonna select this, choose show in menu bar, and now it shows. If you keep on scrolling down, there's another option if you have Control Center in the top right, you have Stage Manager directly from here also. I typically put the button up here for Stage Manager because it's a one-click access rather than going to Control Center and then Stage Manager. I like it being at the top, but there's also another keyboard shortcut. If I hold down Option on the keyboard and just click on it, it's another shortcut where I don't have to click on the menu and then select it. I just hold down Option, click on it, and it toggles it off and on for me exactly like going to the little switch here. Stage Manager allows you to multitask and really focus on one particular app at a time. For those of you who don't like Stage Manager, there are other options that are able to make life easier on your computer, especially if you have a laptop. And primarily, this is the main reason I don't use a mouse. I don't use a mouse at all. I don't use an external mouse for video editing, for my photography, literally nothing because the trackpad if you learn this trackpad on your laptop it far exceeds the standard mouse with all of your options and the ability to multitask so let me show you a few things that are extremely helpful let's start off by turning off stage manager so we're going to go up to the top right turn off stage manager and we're back to square one with a bunch of applications open but they're all stacked on one another so here we are with all of these things and this probably looks common because you're moving windows and it makes it really hard. And often you throw one way down here and then you can't find it and you spend 10 minutes being frustrated because you don't know where anything's at. So there's a feature called Mission Control that allows you to multitask with these windows. So let me show you how that works. If I take three fingers and I swipe up on the keyboard, it spreads everything out. So you're getting a nice bird's eye view of all of the applications that are open. If I move my cursor on top of any of these icons or any of these windows, when I click on it, it becomes the primary focus. So three fingers up, spreads everything out. Oh cool, I wanna go to my music, I'll click on that. That now comes forward for me. It alleviates the reason to move all of the windows around, which I know you hate doing. We all do. Now you'll also notice that when I did three fingers upwards, notice up at the top here, you have desktop one and desktop two. And let's, let me do that again. If you move your cursor all the way towards the top of the screen, notice how it pops down. You can actually have multiple virtual desktops. So imagine having a whole bunch of monitors lined up next to your laptop but instead of a physical monitor, they're just digital monitors. Because the way this works is over on the far right-hand side, I can click this plus sign and it's going to add a third desktop for me. Let's add just a, a fourth one and why not? We'll do a fifth. What this means is I can drag this application to that window. I can drag this application to that window. Oop, and there it goes. This was the one in the very far bottom. So three fingers up again. Let's go back to desktop one, three fingers up again. So here we're gonna put music in desktop five. Safari is in desktop four. I should say Amazon. The YouTube is in desktop three. I have notes on desktop two. And let's say that I want the calendar to be on another one and I can actually just drag this up 
and it will create a whole calendar full screen view for me right there. Now what's neat about this is anytime I do three fingers up, I'm always able to click amongst these desktop options in the top and it takes me to that desktop. If I do three fingers up, I can go to desktop number two, three fingers up, I can go to desktop number three, so on and so forth. Now if I take three fingers and swipe to the left, it takes me to the next desktop. Swipe to the left again, it takes me there. So this gives you the ability to kind of move your windows around and have it full potential of the screen and not have to worry about different windows stacked on top of one another. It makes it really, really convenient for multitasking. Taking this a step further, you can even assign different applications to a particular desktop window. For example, if I always wanted these five desktops plus the calendar at full screen to be there all the time, I can say I want to dedicate desktop number three to Safari and always open up in desktop three for Safari. So if I click on desktop three and I go down to the dock, if I right click on Safari and go to options, I have this choice down here at the bottom to say assign to either all desktops, this desktop, or nothing. So all desktops means that if I now switch amongst all of the desktops using three fingers to go left and right, it's always going to have that Safari window in every single desktop. So it kind of defeats the whole purpose of what I'm trying to do. Now, if I go back to desktop three and I right click again on Safari, we go to options and choose this desktop. So now Safari is not gonna show up in any other desktop. In fact, if I go back to Safari here, let's quit out of Safari. Let's go to desktop number five. Let's open up Safari and you'll notice it actually switched us out of that other virtual desktop and brought us right back to desktop number three where this is at, where we told Safari to be for that space. What else is nice is anytime you create a new desktop up there, it always uses the current desktop wallpaper, but you can actually change that. For example, if I go to desktop six here, we could go to photos. Actually, let's bring photos to desktop four, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to bring out a photograph. Let's do, let's go to my shared library here. All right, we'll use this picture of the overview of San Francisco. So I'm gonna to go to the top right and do set wallpaper, and it sets this virtual desktop as the wallpaper so now when I go back up, notice the other ones still have the bow and arrow, Cupid's bow, I believe it's called. And now this one has the city overview or the skyline or whatever you wanna call it. So it makes it really nice to distinguish also visually what desktop you're in, because then you can kind of correlate that, say, oh, this is the background picture of the graffiti. So I know that mail is gonna pop up in that window. Now at any given time, if you wanna get rid of some of these desktops, you can just hover your cursor over the top and there's gonna be a little X in the top left. And if I click that, it just gets rid of that desktop completely. If I hold down option on the keyboard, I can now have X's across all of them and I can just go through and get rid of all of them. And I'm left back with my main desktop and the full screen calendar. And if I click on that, that button, it brings it out of full screen and it brings it back as a native natural window under the very first desktop. So it's really, really convenient to utilize mission control in all of these virtual desktops because it makes your life so much easier. And what I like to do, especially for the Finder, I prefer to right click and have options for the Finder to show up in all desktops because naturally the Finder is all of your files and folders and you don't really wanna go hunting or assign that to a particular desktop. You always want that available because chances are if you're going to the Finder, you're looking for something. So I usually keep this on to be assigned to all desktops. That way, when I swipe amongst all of these virtual desktops, I'm always going to see that Finder window in every single desktop. Pretty cool, huh? Now the last thing, actually, you can assign keyboard shortcuts to this as well. So if we go back to system settings, if you don't have a trackpad or you don't wanna use a trackpad, if you do wanna use a mouse, you can still take advantage of all of these features. The stage manager, the mission control. If you go down to keyboard on the left-hand side and choose keyboard shortcuts, this window, let's minimize some of this, get out of the craziness. 
Here, you have the ability to assign or look at to find out what keyboard shortcuts are for all of these features. If we go to Mission Control, you'll notice that to initiate Mission Control, it's Control on the keyboard with the up arrow. So now, when I do that, notice how it brought the Desktop 1 and Desktop 2, so it brought those down for me. Other options, uh, turn Stage Manager on and off. This one actually I don't think had one, I assigned it to be F1. Uh, so now if I do F1, notice the desktop hid, and if I click on the desktop, settings goes over there on the left. So function one turns it on and off. And then underneath that, if I untoggle mission control, move left a space, move right a space, switch to desktop one, switch to desktop two, desktop three, so on and so forth. So here it's saying, if I wanna go to the right, I'll do control and then right arrow, and it takes me to the next virtual desktop. Right arrow again, left arrow, left arrow. If I do control two, it's gonna just jump me to a particular one that I can go to. That's why I love using the trackpad because everything is a finger gesture. I can do three fingers, two fingers, four fingers, one finger, all of that. And if you're not familiar with your trackpad, get to know it. In the system settings, if you go to trackpad down at the bottom, it actually shows you a whole bunch of little animations here to teach you how your trackpad actually works. And the biggest thing I think is the whole concept of right clicking. On the Mac, they actually don't call it right click, they call it secondary click. Why? I don't know, they, that's just what they do. This whole trackpad can be one giant button or it can be two buttons. What you need to do is in this very first point and click category, notice secondary click. Click with two fingers is going to initiate that right click or secondary click. So if I click here with two fingers on the desktop, it's going to give me that secondary menu to allow me to create a new folder, change wallpaper, all that kind of stuff. Now, if I change this from chain click with two fingers, I could say click in bottom right corner. That way, when I click in the bottom right corner of the trackpad, it's actually doing the right click. If I click anywhere else, it's not doing it. I have to go to the bottom right and then it does it. Same thing with left corner. If I choose the right corner now, it doesn't do it. I need to go to the left side to initiate the right click. So I prefer to do two fingers and I would highly suggest to kind of go through these options and as you hover your cursor over there, it's gonna give you a little animation at the top to show you a little preview of what that feature or gesture does. And this is also where I have the ability for mission control, swipe up with three fingers. Well, I could change that to swipe up with four fingers. So now three fingers doesn't do anything. I need to take four fingers and go up and now it does mission control. I will say that when you're getting used to the trackpad, don't keep your fingers so close together, otherwise it's gonna think you have one giant finger. It may not recognize it as three individual points on the trackpad, so just do three fingers, kind of spread them out a little bit. So overall, that is stage manager and mission control. There's all sorts of other ways to multitask on your Mac, but these are two of the main ones that I personally use that I think are extremely helpful for any advanced user, any beginner user on your Mac, or pretty much any user on your Mac. So if you don't like the trackpad, I highly encourage you to give it a shot. Take away your mouse for a week or two and force yourself to use this because I guarantee it, you will probably love it. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button. If you wanna support me in my channel, go ahead, hit that thanks button below. And if you learned something new, go ahead, hit that subscribe, tap that little bell, and we'll see you next time.